We'll just skim through it, but please, when you receive the notes, just go through it. I think it will really help you. Um, I prepared it. My background is this. I did bachelor's at Scott uh, Theological College. Njuguna was my classmate, Rev. And then I went to, I went to the US for two years. He also went to the US himself. Um, but I don't think we were, we were not there at the same time. I went there in 2008 to 2010. And then I came back and then I went to Canada for five years. Um, so I have experiences of two countries, but in theological studies or so liberal arts. Um, so I cannot claim to have expertise in every subject. So that's why I asked some other guys to help me. So there's a friend of mine who also studied in the US and studied in Canada. He's, he's doing his PhD at McGill University in Canada. And then there's a friend of mine called Brian. He was going to come with me today, but it was not possible for him to join me. Um, he, he's doing, he just finished his Master of Medical Science at, uh, in Sweden, and he's doing his PhD in Sweden. He just came home and he's going back to Sweden um, in about a month. So he also contributed to studying in Europe. Um, nobody can become an expert in everything, so you have to rely on external help. Now, I'm going to skim through the information I have, uh, maybe just telling you my story, how I ended up getting the scholarship. In both instances, I got a scholarship. Uh, for masters, I got a 100% scholarship, actually. Uh, they even paid for my flight and my, f and my and going back. They initially, they told me to raise money. They told me to raise $3,500, which is 350K, maybe even less than that at that time. In 2008, probably the exchange rate was around 70 shillings. So probably 200. Yeah, it's actually around 200 because uh, I raised the money and I paid. When I got there, wakani rudishia. So I was so rich, nikanunu a plot. Because I was, I was like, wow. So I bought a plot near Moy University for 150K. I actually sold that plot last year for 1 million. And then I bought a plot in Kisarian because we wanted to buy a plot in Nairobi. So I sold, I bought, I, I, I sold the one I bought with the reimbursement for my flight. That was a very good scholarship. And then in 2013, Nikapata Scholarship, Yakwenda, Canada. Um, I will tell you how I got it as part of my story so that it can help you. Um, so that one, it was almost 100% also, because there are two scholarships. One from an organization in the UK and another one from an organization based in the US. In total, they gave me around $32,000 per year for four years. So around 32,000, how much? 3.4, maybe, yeah for every year for four years, for tuition and other things. Now, this is basically, if you want to go and study abroad, it is possible. There is nothing that is not possible. Everything is possible. What you need to do, first of all, you need to choose the direction you want, the direction of your, of your studies, whether you want to go professional or academic. Professional meaning, you want to do an MBA, for example, or you want to do something towards a career building, or you want an academic track so that you can become a lecturer, you know, or a scientist or something like that. So trajectory. So professional, that means then you have to choose your course very, very well. So number one, you decide whether you want to go professional or academic. And that means you do not want to go academic if you don't like teaching. <clears throat> so you find somebody, a man that can a master's, a man a PhD, like in a PD classroom. So Nashanka Sasa, why did you choose to do all these academic programs? So you, if you want something that is towards your career, then you choose that one, that probably an MBA or a professional. for a scholarship. If there is something I really hate, 
is when people send me a message on WhatsApp or send me a message on my Facebook, like, seriously, how will I look for a school for you? Look for a school for yourself, okay? That is the rule of the thumb. Spend time online looking for a school. Tunaelewana? Yes, um, there is a young lady who recently, the mother called me, oh, siju mtoto anataka kwenda Canada and this and all that. And then, okay, Gambia, the best is give that young lady my number and then she can write me a message on WhatsApp. So she wants to ask me every single question you can ever imagine. At a video, you, you can find information online. How is the weather there? Like seriously, so that's information you can, you can get, Cindy. You can get information. If you have told you, for example, uh, University of Toronto or McMaster University, I went to McMaster University, uh, or McGill University, or Quebec or whatever. If I've told you this university is good, you don't have to follow up again with another question. How is the weather there? Is it too cold? Because that is a question you can actually find information for. Save your energy for a better question. Okay, like, okay, I've applied or I have seen that they offer this. Do you think this is a good idea? Something like that. Generic questions, you forget it. Um, that's very, very important. Um, I think this is actually for mainly, let, I think I need to understand who are the audience first here. Um, let's, let's, let's start there. Are majority of you, are you, are you done with college? college, <laughs> Okay, how many are still in college? Okay, how many have not enrolled in college yet? So you will be looking for undergraduate programs. Okay, undergraduate, undergraduate. How many are done with college and probably will be looking for masters? Okay, good. Because the process is so different. The process is so different. For undergraduate program, let me start with undergraduate program. Um, I don't know if you've received, have you shared the notes? You've seen it, eh? Yeah, so you can follow. I'm not going to go through it because I'm trying to save time so that you can ask me some specific question um, and I can answer. Um, I'm told they are recording, otherwise sing it to me a mic. Now, so for undergraduate program, there are several avenues you can use. And let's talk about US, for example. Um, kuna athletic scholarships, okay? Kuna what they call merit scholarship or academic scholarships. And then peer kuna opportunities um, for, for like diploma level programs and so on. So the challenge is identifying those programs and being able to prove to a visa officer that you are actually going to return, even though you might not want to return. Atakama ukona plan kuenda kuka lazima prove ya kwamba you are coming back. For graduate, and then you have to do, sometimes you have to do English exams, come at TOEFL, SATs, um, IELTS, depending on the school. So you have to, first of all, don't do those, do not, please, do not enroll in some of those English exams until you know the school. It does not make sense, it is a waste of money sometimes. I know somebody who did GRE, or uh, gradu it's called graduate, uh, uh, graduate, um, GRE name, and I'm by the way. Graduate registered exams. You, you do GRE, that's mainly for graduate school, masters and above. And then like, he ended up applying to a different school that did not require GRE, and you have already paid like 60K for GRE. Or you, you do TOEFL, only to realize that you surely I take TOEFL in Ataka Isles. So that means your TOEFL is useless, you have to do IELTS. Or you do IELTS, Nakumbe Onataka, TOEFL. So you just have to make sure, first of all, you have identified the school, you've decided, you, first of all, you decide on the program you want to study, and then, number two, you identify the program, and identify the school. And there are so many ways of doing that. You can, what I did myself was to go to the website of a crediting agency called ATS. So the, the, that's for now, for religious education and theology. So I looked at all the schools that have been accredited for, by ATS. Go on, when by one by one. Since I had already started in the US, I did not want to go to the US. So I wanted a different school 
probably, I wanted a different country, most likely in Canada. And then I had another criteria. I wanted a school that will not ask me to do GRE. So I ended up one by one, because if you can find a pool, it's so easy, because you don't know the names of the school. So you find like an accrediting agency where may list all the schools. So you click the school, and then you go to admissions. You click admissions, and then you look at the requirements. Because trust me, not all schools are the same. When a mashule tuki apply, you will not be accepted. Because they are so high, and their cutoff is so high. Maybe a B, and those guys are looking for GPA at 3.7, 3.8. It is too competitive. So you look for a, like another second tier school. Because kuna kwanga na categories, kuna Ivy League, and then kuna, like, kuna categories ya Yale, Harvard, Princeton, University of Chicago, University of Pennsylvania, MIT, all those fall in the same category. And unless you are a very, you are on top of the range as well, you'd rather not apply to those schools because those schools are, number one, they are very difficult to get, number two, they are very expensive. But they also have very good scholarships. Now, now that's the other side of the, of the game. Some of these very expensive schools have also very good scholarships. But you don't get the scholarships until you are inside. So that means you have to look for money and go by faith that when you are already, when you are there, you will actually get the scholarships. Are you following what I'm saying? So sometimes it's better you, you look for like a lower level school. Uh, not, they are not lower level in the sense that they are not good schools. They are just categorized to levels. It's like somebody wants to, to study business. Okay, you can, do, you can do business at Ijaton, see you? But you can also do business at Strathmore. Are these the same? You'll pay more for Strathmore, see you? You can do communications at Ijaton, or you can do communications at uh, Daystar. You have to pay more money for Daystar. And you, so it just depends on your pocket, it depends on your interest. All right, so um, let, I'm talking about the graduate level, masters and above. Um, so once you have identified, you have identified the program, you have identified the school, what I did, and I think this is a very good um, advice for you, is to go through the list of professors who are in that school. Because in most cases, graduate level, masters, involves a thesis. Okay, and you do not get, you don't do a thesis unless you have a supervisor. So that means the school will not accept you unless they have somebody who will sub supervise your area of research. And the reason you need to do this research is because application is very expensive. So you don't want to waste money applying to a school that will not accept you. Are you, are you getting the point? Tunelewana? Yes, because application is very expensive, so you don't want to apply to a school that will not accept you. So you want to apply to a school that you know, I'll apply and that's it. So this is what I did. I went through the list of ATS, accrediting agency, Nikangalia, Niki Eliminate one by one. University of Toronto, Nikangalia, Nikaona Apana. This was very, the, 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 the demands was too high. Well, you have to do this, you have to have published um, to do three papers, you must have Greek and Hebrew. Mimi ni kona Greek sina Hebrew. You must have this kind of nikaona apana. Nikaachana na University of Toronto, nikaenda Magill, nikaachana na Magill. Magill was too expensive. Um, Magill is the Harvard of, of Canada. And then I went, and then finally I found McMaster University. And I saw the requirements. Nikaona, okay, so this one is good. So they say you either have Hebrew or Greek, so that is nimepita yo. And then, kid, something that attracted me. If you have studied in a country whose medium of instruction is English, then you don't have to do TOEFL. Ah, nika smile sana, nika sema. Tick, that's savings. Because TOEFL in 2008 was around 23K. So you squeeze in gap. It's expensive, those things are expensive. And it takes time. So if you want to go to school in September, for example, now Jafanya Tofel, forget it. You start applying for next year because I would have beat your deadline. Ah, yeah. So and then I went through the list of professors. Nikaona, Professor uh, Steven Studebaker, 
he has written on some of these issues. I wrote him an email. And this is very important. I've even gave, given you a template there. You write an email to somebody you think will be your supervisor. How you answer to apply? You are just trying to establish some form of relationship. Because so far, you have not used any coin. You've, you have just used your bundles. We are trying to avoid, where well, was it to me a PESA, only for you not to be accepted. Are we together? So I wrote to Professor Steven Studebaker, Nikamwambia, my interest is this, 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 this. Do you think you might be able to supervise me? I can, say, I can reply immediately, like after several hours, I can reply, I can say, Ma, I think that sounds very interesting. Go ahead and apply. Seek apply, Nikangoja Tena. The next day, Nika, I wrote to Langham Foundation. Okay, Langham Foundation is a sponsoring, is a, is a scholarship organization. Nikawambia, I'm thinking of applying to McMaster. Do you by any chance, you see how I frame my conversation, do you by any chance sponsor students uh, going to McMaster? Or I, something like that. If I applied and I got it, and I, do you think you would consider McMaster? Because also, you also need to know who are the key sponsoring organizations within your field. And check whether they would sponsor somebody going to that particular university. Kuliko who apply, umepata, and then only to realize, ah, yeah, I will not actually get the sponsorship from the organizations, come a Ford Foundation, or some of these organizations that would have sponsored me. So Akaniambia, we actually have a, a student from China who is winding up her studies and we have sponsored. Nikajua up. They have only told me it is possible for them to sponsor somebody going to McMaster University. The Divinity School of McMaster University, that's the way, where I went. So I applied. Trust me, I applied to only one school. I did not need to apply to any, any other school. One, I was too broke. I was a pastor back in the village. I didn't have any money. I was teaching a, a college, a Bible school back in Eldoret. It was Mushara ilikuwa pesa kidogo. So I don't want to put my money into applying to many schools. I was like, one, I have already found a supervisor. Number two, I have checked. I meet all the qualifications. I apply to McMaster only. I never applied to any other school. I got accepted um, in good time. Number two, the cancer sasa kuanza kutafuta scholarship. Many people make a mistake. They start by looking for a scholarship before admission. Get this from me. Start by looking for admission first, not scholarship. Okay? And please don't write a message to people who are abroad telling them what kutafuti a scholarship. You tell them I have been admitted to University of Pittsburgh. I have been admitted to this particular university. Do you know any scholarship organization? You don't tell them to look for a scholarship. to begin with. So you start by getting the school, and then you start hunting for scholarships. So I applied to, um, I applied to several uh, scholarships. One of them, Nilang, the one that had said they will, they might consider me. They might consider paying for somebody going to McMaster. And I got the scholarship. They gave me $20,000 per year for four years. Nika applied to Scholar Leaders International. Waka reject. Okay? Sasa, I have 20000 fees ni 16000 So that means I only have a balance here, 4K. So I have to find a way. Nikaanza ku, you go, some, most of this information is online. What is the cost of living in Canada? If you have a family, what is the cost of living for a single student? Rent ngapi, medical health ngapi. Okay, is it possible to get a job? Nikafanya iso yesabu because my I need to prove to the visa officer that I have the money. I have the twenty thousand from the scholarship, but nisika itunde kusema I'll actually get the visa because I have a scholarship. Nikaona, I see buyer sana. Well, four thousand to around six thousand should be okay for a single student. Okay, I'm married, my wife and my children, uh, so I will not apply for a visa for all of us. And then I went to my church, AIC Fellowship in Eldoret, and I asked for a bank statement. Nikaambia tafadhali munisaidia bank statement. 
So wakaniandikia barua kusema this is our pastor and, and, and indeed I was true, I was one of the elders there. And we won, we are sending him. So they gave me a very good bank statement. I think it was around 10, 12 million bank statement. And I went, I got my visa. So when I was there already, um, Nimemaliza, I went there in uh, September. In October, my wife aka apply for visa. Akanyimwa. Okay? And then Kidogo somehow got up in another way. When I was in the US, and this is something I always tell people when they are preparing to go abroad. When you land there, please find a church, be a member of that church and be faithful, find something to do in the church. So I wrote to one of the elders of our church where I used to worship when I was in, in the US. Nekamwabia the story. He, the guy was a lawyer. Unfortunately, he has passed away. He wrote an email to the, American, to the Canadian embassy. Now, Kasema, I am going to support that family with $12,000 per year for three years. And it's money he actually gave us. See, I think we have a bank bank statement. What do you want bank statement? So that's how my wife was able to, to get the, the, the visa. Now, I can join. So this is how the, that, that's how the process is. And part of the things you can do now to prepare yourself, because part of the application process is to you upload your CV. So make sure you have a very good CV. Um, the template, you can get it online. You can get a very good template online. Write a very good CV. Have a good email address. Okay? For example, sipangwingu2022 at gmail.com. Have a professional email. The best email is your names. So if you are called Daniel Njoroge, it's daniel.njoroge at gmail.com. That's a very nice email. Than having, like, I don't care, okay? I don't care at gmail.com. You know, somebody looking at it is like, what is wrong with this guy? So make sure you have a, those are little things that you can do free of charge. I have given you the template there, how you can frame the email going to the professor, all right? So, and then you apply, um, and then you have to, in most cases, part of the application is a sample paper. You'll be asked to submit a sample paper. So that means when you're in college, you write papers, isn't you? You write research papers. So a sample paper will be the best of your papers. Do not plagiarize, because you'll be found out. So write some of the papers you wrote for in college, polish it, and submit it. And in fact, if possible, run it by anti-plagiarism software. Because if they found out there that you actually plagiarized, you, are, you don't get accepted on a blacklist. You, know, you understand plagiarism? It's copying, you know, somebody and a copy paste, because you have to change gene to submit. Anti-plagiarism software. So in gets there, they run it by the software. It shows red, 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 yellow, what, copied. This is from this website. Woo, you're already blacklisted. So now to manage your regret, unfortunately, um, we received very uh, top candidates this year, and, and the company was able plagiarize. Okay. And sometimes even scholarship organizations will ask you for a sample paper because they want to know we are putting our money in somebody with potential. So check, please, uh, anti-plagiarism and so on. Uh, sample paper, that means make sure you submit the best. And then you'll be told to write statement of purpose, SOPs. A statement of purpose is also a statement of intent. Sometimes in it, a statement of intent and objectives, application essay, objectives for graduate studies, personal background, cover letter, application essay. Now, this is really where it is so crucial. And it is, it is so unfortunate that many young people don't take this one as something serious. Mutu to anamuka afternoon and andika your statement of purpose. Take time to write that thing. Basically, it is a letter of intent which describes you. It answers at least two key questions. Why are you interested in this program? And what makes you special? All right? And sometimes it also ask, answers this question. Why should they choose you over other qualified candidates? Because you are not the only person applying to that school, there are so many other candidates, isn't you? So basically, you are making a case for yourself. You are writing as to why 
you should be accepted to that school. There is a young girl, she graduated from, she finished from uh, Moy Girls, she got a straight A, and she was applying to um, Penn State, Penn State University in the US. Uh, at that time, I was running, running an agency in Eldoret. I had not gotten this job in Nairobi, so it was my side hustle, running an agency, trying to help people, and so on and so forth. So the mom, my neighbor at home, a camuleta, because she was applying for, she was at that time working for Equity Bank, these are top students. So I read the letter, statement of intent, Nani Kamwambi, you will not be accepted. So we had to rewrite it together. I wrote it with her, Nikam Namabia, you know, you need to make a case for yourself. Why, why should you be accepted at Penn State? What is so important about you? So you have that section that you talk about the course, a little bit about your background, Kidogo, but then you say the course, the potential, your contribution in community, how that course will be so important in the community, and how your presence in that school will be uh, will, will add value to the class. It's a very, it's a very small page, uh, it's a one page document, but you need to make a case for yourself. It's an opportunity for you to brand yourself. So please take that statement of purpose seriously. Um, I think you have the notes with you. So like for, I, I pulled this out from, uh, this is from, um, probably it's from uh, one of the, probably it's a scholarship agency or something. It says, Please write an essay, approximately two to four typewritten pages, addressing one, educational background, two, research experiences, three, major areas of interest, and four, immediate and long-term goals, and five, unusual life experiences which might make traditional criteria, e.g. test scores, greater averages, less indicative of academic promise. Please use this page and other sheets as necessary. Now that's how they frame the question. Please write an essay, approximately two to four typewritten pages, addressing one, educational background. So Siyasa Kusema, I went to Kapkemich Primary School, and then I went to Sijui, um, I don't know, you start stating where you went and all these things. They might, they can see those things in the CV and the photocopies of documents you've sent. So they want also the promise, okay, in your academics. What is it that is so unique about you? And the, the good thing is, look at number five, unusual life experiences which might make traditional, traditional criteria, e.g. test scores, grades, average, less indicative of academic promise. In other words, you are saying that I scored a B plus in this course, but this is not a true reflection of who I am. So you are telling them a story that supports that they will even admit you even if you have lower grades. Because sometimes you, have, you might have been going through trouble at home, you know, challenges with health and so on, your own story, political situation in your country and so on and so forth. Do not exaggerate, but say the truth. All right, so um, I've given you some of the um, points there. So you write introduction and so on, be brief description of your undergraduate journey your activities, past or current, work experience, leadership or volunteer that have helped you uh, discuss more on your research interest. And this is very important because the school will now decide whether they want to admit you. Because if your research interest, they have nobody in that school that has any of those qualifications, they will not admit you. Because the school will only admit if they can assign you somebody to supervise you. So if you are, for example, you are, you're going to research on uh, you're going to research on, um, you are applying to a school in the US and you want to do a research on Kenya. Like I want to do a research on urban planning in, um, in county government of Nakuru and so on and so forth. It's like, I mean, then you can as, as well apply to Ijaton, Kabrak and so on. So it's, you can do urban planning, best practices in urban planning in, um, in and you don't even have to be specific, and how those best practices can be applied in developing countries. So known as Asa Ioni, it's more, it is more realistic and most likely you'll get a supervisor than saying you narrow, to make it too narrow that they cannot find somebody with an expertise in Kenyan urban planning. 
unless they have employed a professor from Kenya. Uh, so you, you want to really think very well about your um, program. And then sometimes they ask you to write a personal statement. Personal statement is an essay to describe your ambition, skills, experiences. All right? L listen to this. Tell us the story of your life. Where you come from. What your home, your family, your community. How you grew up. How you became such a successful student. What difficulties you had to overcome and what you hope for for the future. Don't worry about repeating material you may have mentioned in the earlier parts of this application. Be as specific and detailed as possible. And be sure that your account of your life is entirely factual. This is from Kensap. Kensap is a scholarship organization that uh, sponsors students through athletic scholarship to go to Ivy League universities. All right, this, this is another one. In a maximum of 600 words, write a personal statement discussing your interests, life experiences, goals, and social commitment. Do not exceed the maximum length. Long, longer statements will not be read. <laughs> That's what it says. Uh, then in Guinea, from a university in the US in Asema, there is evidence to suggest that there is a correlation between success in graduate study and such qualities as deep interest in your field, persistence, ambition, self-discipline, and independence. Please describe any such accomplishments or experiences that would be pertinent to your goals for graduate study. This is a very difficult essay to write. You are writing, and yet at the same time, you are branding yourself. So you don't want to over-exaggerate, but you also don't want to be too humble. So you want to say things that are, you've done, your commitments in your community, your passion, the things that have made you, you who you are, your experiences as a young lady growing in a village in Kenya, and so on and so forth. Just recently, um, I know this is being recorded, so I'm trying to be very careful. Recently, I read a story that someone uh, did about a university, yeah, I mean about his home village. And it was posted on a university website. And I know this guy. I know him very well. I even shared it with Reverend Joguna. That's how actually he ended up inviting me to come here. He's like, hey, by the way, are you available on 17th? It started with a conversation. He'll forward your message. Nikamwambia, what do you think is wrong with that essay? Because we know this guy together with him. I know him with Reverend Juguna and myself, we know him in and out. Like in the story in Yamandika, which has been posted on the university website as part of fundraising for the university. And this is a university abroad. I was like, his story is sound. It doesn't sound like the guy we know. The guy is saying that they said that one thing. Uh, it didn't add up. It didn't add up. So sometimes you don't want to over exaggerate, and you don't want also to be to also don't say what you really need to say. So you need to balance. Um, so that is it. Um, so you're giving. You want to shine. So we, at this point, we are still talking about admissions. We haven't even talked about um, other things. But admission is so crucial because. Admission is expensive. Most of these schools charge around $90 to $150, $200. That is 20K or 10K. So you take your work application, you will into something that you will not be admitted. Avadali will admit you so that you cost a pesa. Kuliko ulipe, now you admit you. Are we together? So you have to make sure you get all these things right, do your research properly, apply to a good school that you know will really admit you. And then also be very careful with some of these private universities abroad that uh, they are not well established, they are not accredited, and so on. Sometimes Uta and Angali appear cheap schools, like any cheap sometimes can be very expensive because they are not accredited, they are not recognized. You go graduate, and when you come back home, by the way, you have to do what is called um, 
validations of your credentials. So you have to submit your credentials to Commission for University Education for them to validate and to equate it, it's called equation, to equate it to Kenyan standard. Like for example, for me, as part of my job hunting, I had to submit my two degrees, my master's and my PhD to Commission for University Education so that they can say that this master's comes from an accredited university and it is equal to a master's in Kenya. So they gave me a letter for that one. And then it's the same thing, it's 6,000 shillings per, per degree. So I paid 12,000 to get a, another certificate from Commission for University Education. So you've gone to a university in abroad, then you come back here, they don't recognize it. So you know it's, it's useless. So you also want to make sure you're applying to a school that is accredited. So please read the statements on, on, um, on SOPs, uh, these statements, personal statement, and also statement of your personal, personal um, interest, letter of intent, and so on. There is also another statement. If you are applying to Canada, they will tell you to write a letter of intent to the embassy. Okay? Now, this is not for the school. This is for your visa application process. It is a one-page document. They tell you, write a one-page statement. With six, they, they ask you six questions. And one of the questions, I don't remember the rest. If I pulled it, I'll find it. But one of the questions is, why do you want to study in Canada and not your home country? And he a visa officer. And by the way, for Canada, you don't go to the embassy. So you don't have a chance to kujitetea. It's not like the US. The US, you, 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 you apply, and then you appear embassy, and then you go to a window, and you go to the window, and you go to the like you, and you go visa denied. But you go to the window, so where are you studying, where are you going to study? You're like, I'm going to Wheaton College, and where is Wheaton College? Sasa where you come to Jewish or Riyako. Okay, it is in Chicago. Um, oh, all right, how is the weather there, by the way? And you need to have studied, known the weather, um, where will you get the fees and all those things. But for Canada, you use Visa Application Center. They have engaged what they call CFS Global. It is a visa processing agency for many countries. Australia, Canada, Sweden, all the Schengen visas. Poland, New Zealand, all those countries, when you don't go to the embassy. You apply through Visa Application Center. So that means the documents you submit to them are so crucial. Because you don't have a chance, ya kujitetea. So the letter of intent for the embassy is very, very crucial. Do your research properly and then write. Ask, think critically. What is it that if I say, and I say truthfully, will actually convince the visa officer and a particular visa? And this is also very crucial for the courses you decide to study. Okay? If, for example, you want to go abroad and you want to go to do Master of Education, how will you write the letter of intent? You've decided to go and do Master of Education at the University of Toronto. How will you convince the visa officer that you are studying at the University of Toronto is so crucial for Master of Education? When that course is so common in Kenya, every university is offering it. You're getting the point? So you, your choice of courses is also so crucial. Don't, I always tell people, don't go for courses that are so common okay, like education and so on. Or if you decide to go for education, then you pick something within education that is not so well developed. For example, you can decide to do special needs education, and especially focusing on um, children with uh, developmental, developmental disorders. So you can make a case that this, is, this course is still newly developed in Kenya, it is not. So you are trying to convince the visa officer that you want to see the best practices out there so that you can come back and implement. And you can even say that I have always wanted to teach at a school called Kenya Institute of Special Education. But at least unajua, that is your potential employer. Kenya Institute of Special Education and come and train teachers on how to take care of special needs children. Okay, somebody says, I want to study Master of Science, Master of, Master of Science in Information Technology. That course is offered anywhere. 
KU, Strathmore, USIU, Daystar, every university, Ijaton, Moi, Swanasomesha, you. But what if you say that I want to specialize in cybersecurity, okay? Or developing software for cyber, you, you think about something within that particular field that is, it is still developed, it is offered in Kenya, but it is still developing. So kuna potential ya ku convince a visa officer that this is actually a very critical course that it is worth paying the money. Because the question they ask themselves is this, why would you pay $30,000 per year when you can actually pay only $6,000 now we Malaysia the entire program? Why would you want to invest $30,000 to get Master of Education abroad? So what I want to you, you go to Kenya and Toroka. But if you can make a case that my parents, it is worth the investment because this is something, it, it is within my passion and it is also something that um, it, is, it is a need in my country. Are we together? Yeah, so you choose your course very, very well. So things that are not very well developed and, and uh, things that has potential. Um, let me pause there for now before we talk about funding. Uh, so basically, I think we've talked about identifying the school, identifying uh, the course, and then how you can do the application. Very crucial thing that you need to pay attention is the deadlines, application deadlines. Those will not be extended. So Kipitisha deadline in Mepita. And most of the schools deadline around October, some schools in January. So deadline, pay attention to deadlines. Usually, that's why part of the research on Afanya to Nikwaki, on okay, if school ni deadline now on September, these are the requirements, do I have these requirements? Mm, I see the meet here requirements, so let me look for another school. Um, and then Unangale, oh, yeah, if school deadline now on January 31st, that is good. So even, it gives me time to look for, for the things that they want. So you want to make sure that you meet the, the deadlines. And the deadline, by the way, is not just about application. This is a mistake many people do. It is everything, including referees. Okay? Come a deadline in October 31st. In Amanisha, by October 31st, they have received everything, including referee letters, including TOEFL, everything. So, choose your referee well. Of course, inform your referees. Sometimes in Apataga email, so and so has chosen you to, and I you So sometimes it is so important, not sometimes, it's very important that you inform your referee that you are actually applying. Nikama took it after a job. So if you are applying for a job, courtesy and also wisdom demands that you inform your referee that you have applied to so this particular place and they might actually call you to check. To. So you can imagine, there's a young lady, when I was doing the consultancy in Eldoret, there's a young lady who applied to Canada. Okay? Now I can submit um, bank statements. Za mtu fulani. Bila kujulisha uyo mtu. Alipata tu access through another applicant. Akaenda kupeana hizo bank statements. They were very good bank statements. And then the embassy waka call the owner of the statements. Okay? What do you think the owner said? Oh, who is that? Na hapa maandika my uncle. Or brother to my dad. See you already in visa denied. Ama unaomba mutu bank statement, ama history ya kununua bank statements. Watu wananunua anga bank statements. Mutu wananunua bank statements, but you don't remind the person when ya mekupatia bank statement, ya kwamba ni na apply, tafadhali expect, I've launched the application, so in case they called you, my name is so and so, and hapa ni natoka hii familia, so do, a kaya kijua most likely aneza, pigiwa simu. So sometimes, um, embassies on a call, sometimes they don't. So you need to make sure that you inform the people that you, you've uh, recommending you. Any question? So countries to apply, I, there are many. 
the opportunities are unlimited. You just need to, to be thinking big and be daring. Kuna Australia, then go to Australia. So you need to familiarize yourself with all that. So you can decide to use an agent, you can use, you can apply for yourself. And by the way, you do not need to use an agent. You do not need to use an agent. Kenyans are to trust. So the purpose of an agent in Kenya is because above all, Kenyans don't believe in themselves. They don't trust in themselves. That's why Kenya ataingia kwa lift na ulize inaenda juu na mko chini. We don't trust ourselves. So unapata mtu analipa agent 50k kumchazia karatasi yenye yeye mwenyewe anaweza chaza. If you do, do your homework very well, you do not need an agent. Number one, an agent does not guarantee you a visa. Ukipata an agent and aku guarantee visa, that is a liar. That guy is making money, run away. An agent, have, they have no connection to the embassy at all. Unless kama ni embassy ya Nigeria, Wapi, Congo, whatever. Mwale kuna corruption or whatever. But this is, um, these other countries, Australia, an agent and a connection to the embassy. So I always go to a visa. The, the only good thing with an agent, they know their game very well. They know the schools, they know how the process, but that process, you can do it. You can go online, find the information. What do I need? You do your homework very well. She that you are Kenya, when I'm going to go abroad, na kishon do application. Sasa hana information yoyote, sasa inabidi kwenda kwa agent. But if you do your homework very well, what does, how does this country look like? What are the opportunities? What are the opportunities post-graduation? Do they give me a post-graduation work permit? And so on and so forth. You can actually get that information. Okay? And you apply. Mungine, agents mungine, I saw one in Eldoret, on a um, application fee ni $190. Lakini when you go to the website, it is actually 90. So anakwambia hiyo ingine difference is my fee. And then atakwambia, then then there's another fee ya kuprocess visa. Unona male amekukula double. Amekukula $100 ya kuapply to the school. Akuja kukule another kuapply visa. Akuja kukule tena waki apply for medicals. So yama, that guy goes with clean $500, $500, clean, I'm a from you, when you could actually, if you have internet, you can apply. You can even pay, you just need a debit card or a credit card. That is so easy, you just pay the money and come on, you know $100, I just need around 10K, 11K for kwa card yangu. Nina top up, I pay, you have already paid. You don't need anything else. Another thing that I, I really need to mention is about uh, original certificates, okay? Transcripts, they ask, you find that many schools, especially in Canada and US, they ask you for transcripts as part of the application process, okay? So this is what I normally tell people because ukiingia, some of you have tried this game. Ukiingia kwa hiyo website ya hiyo shule, utaona wanasema, um, you need to ask your school to send us your original transcripts. What does that mean? It means that a transcript is original if it is originating from the school. Because kuna watu river road watatengeneza transcript. So what do you do then? Say you've graduated from Egerton University, you have a bachelor's, na unataka kwenda master's. So do you call the admissions office at Egerton, uambie watume? That's a one way, but the best way is this. You go to Egerton University. Go to the, to the registrar's office. Request for official transcript. The registrars understand because they have been trained. Official transcript nearly may generate you from the system or may stamp original or, or official. Kunaingine wana stampingi unofficial. But this one may stamp official or a stamp to with the logo ya shule. And then what do you do? They put it in an official envelope ya shule. Waweke kwa official envelope ya shule, wa stamp nyuma ya envelope kwa nyesha ijafunguliwa, and then they give you. The moment 
umepewa usifungue the moment you open it it ceases being what original or official the reason i am saying wewe upewe is so that wewe mwenyewe you mail it to the school i have seen a lot of cases of applicants being frustrated by their universities especially in kenya unaambia like register wasema tumetuma lakini hawako aituma so the easiest solution if you can get access to the school naja kuna wengine wamesomea labda shule iko mbali and all this you go ask them for that transcript in fact if you have an intention of applying abroad go get original transcript put them let them seal it in fact itisha mbili ama tatu copies seal it na ukae nayo tu ingoje siku yenye uta apply mimi niko na original transcript from Wheaton a school i graduated december 17 2009 i have like six nimekaa tu nayo it's never been opened of course i have why do i need to open when i know si niliko na ile nyingine yenye nimekuwa nikifotocopy za zile na naomba job but this one is purposely for applications the reason why you need many is because you will need it for probably for the admission and most likely you will need a copy for your scholarships when you start applying for scholarship what are the same thing so you don't want to make another trip again to your university so you ask them to give you um, original transcript so that's what it means so the best is to get it yourself seal it and send it by special post um, or g4s or whatever uh, dhl i think would be best or post office registered mail unaituma and they receive it they do not process applications they will not process your admission unless they receive original transcript that is clear sindio yeah okay kuna swali i think i need to some of us are traveling so i'm i'm sure you you guys are okay so uh, funding kuna scholarships mingi but you really need to spend a lot of time online hunting you need to hunt for those scholarships um there are several categories of scholarships kuna athletic scholarships you are very athletic you play you run and all these things kuna scholarships in athletics especially in, in the US there are plenty Canada si mob sana uh, but especially if you are an athlete a runner and so on most likely utapata scholarship that one uh, because schools wanataka kujenga jina yao so you go there you run for them you're shining for them you're making a name for the school there is need based financial aid especially for students coming from different backgrounds but they are not full scholarships the ones that now come in as full scholarships nearly not a merit based the for academic scholarships you can say a students a minor students top students in a particular field master students the higher you go the more scholarships are available so phd level for example is going to scholarships mingi sana masters kada undergraduate mm, uh, 50 50 you might not even get it because muko wengi wapo to kutoka kwa tamala from brazil from everybody undergraduate you are competing against 17 year olds and 20 year olds who just finished high school and they were shining wherever they are and you are coming from a village in, in Kenya you have never done anything you mwingine amefanya community service they have gone for to study abroad they have worked in coca cola they have done all these things they have a driving license you are 23 you don't have any driving license you have nothing so you are competing against a very big pool but it doesn't mean you don't they, they are not there ziko you just need to hunt for those scholarships spend time online especially ladies you know the world favors ladies there's a lot of scholarships for for ladies you just need to find them um yeah then the rules need the same too for, for searching for scholarships like searching for a school you apply on time that means you must have your admission early if you are going to school in september you want to go study abroad in september try to get your admission by january or february not even you need to get it by october the previous year ndio waze ku hunt for scholarships ikupatia time kutafuta scholarship ku prepare kutafuta bank statements all these things there's a lot of preliminary work that needs to happen ukipata admission two months before you have to go there you will not go i guarantee you you will not go unless you are coming from a very rich family yenye watalipa fees kwanza ni wende utafute scholarship ukiwa uko ndani 
but most of us will depend on scholarships. So that means you need to apply ahead of time so that you can go actually, and um, you can go in, and study uh, without too much problems. All right, so finally, um, how to improve your application. So do well in academics. Um, this is very crucial. When you are, if you are still in school, please try, try to think, I am going to go abroad in the next few years. So what do I need? So you need to have good GPS, good grades, work very hard in school. Do well in SATs, TOEFL, and some of those things. Um, I remember when I was doing the TOEFL, it was paper-based, and it was 99. So you also, kuna kwanga na cut off. If you get a 60 out of 99, it just limits you to a certain number of schools. You get 80 out of 89, it opens the door for everybody. And come to SATs too. You get SATs, the top, and then you know the door is open to any school you want. Okay? So if you didn't do well in SATs, probably you just have to repeat. Because in Funga Milango, you cannot even get scholarships because there is no scholarship agency that will fund somebody who is not doing well. And if you cannot do well in TOEFL and SATs, will you even do well in class? So it's just a proof that this one, we, not, we don't need to invest in this one. And then be active in extracurricular activities. And extracurricular activities here does not even have to do with sports and all that. It just means community service. Community service. What is it that you do in the community? It's part of your story, especially if you want to study in Western countries, Sky Australia, US, they are so keen on community service. What is it that you do for your community? Even scholarship agencies, they fund people who are active in their community. Because education is expensive. So why would I invest in someone who is contributing nothing to the community? Another thing they look at is, of course, volunteering and also uh, leadership potential. What is your potential post-graduation? So I will put my money in a person that is likely going to be a leader, somebody who is going to transform communities. So it is part of your story. So you're contributing to the better future by doing the work now. So invest in that community service. Publications, especially for academic tracks. Uh, publications, you have to write something, publish something. If, so, if you have an interest in academics, then you have to uh, publish something. So you need to start writing something, your papers, and publish them. Um, yeah, there's, I think there is no shortcut about that, especially if you are going to choose non-professional courses. Remember earlier on I said you have to decide your track. Come on, academic or professional. Academic means you are starting to become a researcher. Come on, Brian, my friend, is in Sweden. He's a researcher f doing research on diabetes and what and what. So that's an academic track. He's his plan is to work for organizations like, you know, Kemri and so on and so forth. That's an academic track. But then kuna professional track. You want to do community service, community health, CPA. So that's a professional track. Um, so sometimes for professional track, you don't need publications. But academic, definitely you must publish. So you must publish. Um, improve your communication skills too, uh, especially for your scholarship. Sometimes uh, admission to a school does not require interview, but in most cases, and this even happened for me, I was interviewed for my scholarship. So they also want to know whether you are confident and so on. Um, so communication skills, you practice, you know, diction and mentioning words and uh, convincing arguments and building an argument and so on. Con and confidence, being able to ask a question. Uh, you are able to market yourself. So communication skills is very, very crucial. And also visibility. And there's so many ways of being visible nowadays with social media. And actually, I, I, let me not forget this. Your social me media is your page. It is your brand. So people in Facebook and all this Instagram and, 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 and all these different MySpace and all that. Nowadays, has anybody applied to the US? Anybody on my child at DS160? Raise your hand. When I your DS160? 
It is the, uh, it's part of the visa application in the US, in it was DS-160. A few years ago when I went to the US, I work on Ulisanga, your social media page. But part of the question they ask right now is mention all your handles, all your, your social media pages. Why? Why do you think they would be interested to know your, your, your social media profile? Because nowadays, social media says a lot about a person. Cynthia? So I can guarantee you, kuna watu tuwa menyimua visa, not because they are stupid, but because of the things they post. So unapata mtu, ana dance naked, ana post some very opinionated statements about the US, na anataka kwenda US. Trump is a stupid guy, na unataka kwenda US. Do you think you'll get a visa? Hmm, no. Well, they also value, they value freedom of speech, but they also want to say, well, we have, we have also the freedom to deny you a visa because we don't want problematic people. So, you, so your visibility, you want to be visible, but you also want to be wise to make sure that you are not visible in such a way that will hurt your process of getting admission or getting a scholarship. And finally, a good CV. A good CV. Yeah, and how do you get a good CV? Use a good template, but also the things you've done in a CV. And update your CV regularly. I do that myself. Every time I publish, I update my CV. Like a ma two weeks ago or something, one of the papers I wrote was published in a book. So what do I do? I go to my CV and I update it. I update my CV every constantly. Anything I do that should go into my CV, I update it. And I am employed. Okay? It's not like I need, you don't write a CV because you are looking for a job. Your CV is your page. It is your document. It is like your ID. You also want your CV to say the truth about you. So, and in case somebody asks you for a CV, then you have it already. You just pull it and you send it. And update the people, your referees in your CV. And let them know that you are actually, you've listed them as the referees. And then you must have up-to-date email of those referees. Pengine your email address, unatumia ni azamani ujamaa to meet, ana. Na ushape, ana. This company are interested in employing you. They have written to this referee, lakini this referee does not answer. Do you think what would happen? Some of them, because if they really want you, they will ask you, hey, you need to talk to referee so-and-so because he's not answering his emails. Now, in Guinea, Tosema, look for the other. What, what about the other candidate? It is the same thing for schools. All the schools in the US and Canada, Australia, Sweden, the referees are so crucial, the schools will always write to those referees, asking them to, to fill in a referee form. So you must have notified the person and also send them your updated CV so that they know who you, what you've been up to. Because you mutu anezakuwa watu anakukumbuka when you are in second year or third year. He doesn't know what you've been up to the last few years. So namunambia, hey, by the way, since graduation, I've been doing one, two, three, nimekutumanishia CV so that you know what I've been up to. So that that guy will say, I taught this student, and since graduation, I've monitored her, and this is what she's been doing. I'm a fanya community service. Na atakuwa nasema vitu in our line, and what is in the CV, and that CV is also submitted to the school. Kuliko akuja aseme, I'm a volunteer Coca-Cola, I'm a volunteer wapi, na hizo vitu zote, aziko kwa CV. Unajua kuna pia wa rivalizu ingine, wanakuja wana neka chumvi mingi ya inyesia ukweli. And then they hurt you in the process, because wamesema vitu wata i reflect kwa CV. So these are very crucial things um, that are very, very pertinent to your studying abroad. So basically, I think that is, that's that in a nutshell. All right, and think about countries that people are not thinking about. Go to Sweden, go to Holland, Switzerland. By the way, if you want another country in Africa, go to Swaziland, United Eswatini. Go to Rwanda. Rwanda is so good. Uh, they have very good universities there. You can go and study there. You know, you're, you're bad on your abroad, by the way. You go to Rwanda, you go to Eswatini. Eswatini is this tiny country next to South Africa. You know, Kenda, Eswatini, you're, you're, it's like you are in South Africa already. Or Botswana. Go to Botswana, University of Botswana. And you go there, most likely, you'll get a job. 
I know Kenyans who've gone to University of Botswana, wamesoma na wameajiriwa Botswana. So sometimes una tunafikiria tu US, Canada and then kuna opportunities zingine tu hapa around. Comoros, okay? University of Dar es Salaam. You find that they are all they are cheaper in going abroad, but we are not fungule opportunities. Like for example, you can assume, eh? think, if I went to University of Dar es Salaam for my bachelor's, and then you could you apply in the Canada, and do you know it's very, there's high chances you pay a visa? Because you have actually studied outside your country. They see that this is actually somebody who dreams big. You say my bachelor's is from University of uh, Rwanda. I did there four years. Now I've learned some French. Actually, that's another thing. If you have the power to learn a new language, learn a new language. Go to France. Let me tell you about a friend of ours as I finish. There's this girl, Aneto Chemu. I can insist our Gladys Bosholey. When we were in Canada, Chemu came to Canada as a permanent resident. Aneto Chemu boss. Okay. She, she wanted to study abroad and she wanted to live abroad, especially in a country that speaks French. And she was so brilliant. So what she did, she did French in high school. And when she finished French in high school, I kind of Lyon's Francais, I can French. And then she went to, to France for six months to live with her family in France. I don't know, in, 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 I don't know what they call it. You live with a family so that you practice your French to perfect it. So Akiwa Uko, I can apply to Canada. And she applied to Quebec. Quebec. Quebec is the French-speaking province in, in Canada. Canada is eight provinces and eight territories. So there's, Canada is two languages, French and English. Only one, only one province in Hungary, French, Quebec. I can apply to Quebec. Do you think she was accepted? Of course. Because I was law. She had already finished law school at Malaysia Mbaka KSL, Kenya School of Law. So she came and she is now employed by the Canadian government as a lawyer, a family lawyer or something. She, and she is based in Toronto. And actually London, Ontario. So you see, sometimes you strategize and you think, if you're good in languages, the easiest way to go abroad is through languages. Assume you studied, um, you, you, you did some German. Do you know it opens the door for you to any, you go to Austria, you go to Germany, it opens the door for you to study in, in some of these countries. You know French? It opens the door for you to study anywhere. And you, and you can actually make a case that I want to study international relations specializing in French, something like that. So language is very good. Uh, so if you did a lot of uh, education uh, languages and you want to go abroad, learn a new language. Learn French. The younger people who are here, who, you still have time to learn a new language, learn it. Go to a Lyon's Francais, learn French. It opens the door for you for so many things. So many things. Okay. Buona Swale. Okay. Sao sao. God bless you, unless you have a question. to just say thank you, Dr. Tarus, for gracing us with your presence. Uh, I think we've taken in a lot. Personally, I'm uh, a victim of courage after scholarship. So I'm a victim as an individual. I'm a victim. So I think next time, after Shule, that process is over. Sawa, sawa. Odu? I think you can say the final words. We definitely cannot say enough thank yous. So to appreciate uh, Dr. Inama Kofi Mzuri Zaidi. 
He's one tired man today, and he still has about three hours of driving to Eldoret. And so we really appreciate for the sacrifice to be with us this uh, afternoon. I hope Melan Kitum. Wale wana plan kwenda maju. Simta tuita pia graduation. Yeah, we don't to come for those graduations, Maju. To apply a scholarship, ya kutulipia visa, ya kwenda graduation. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we trust that um, uh, for those who are thinking about uh, studying abroad, that this has been informative for you, and that you will be able to pursue your dreams, and uh, God willing, achieve them. Let's also remember to share um, with others what we have learned, and the easiest way of sharing is uh, sharing the link to this video, which will be available um, in our page, our YouTube page, AIC Njoro Town Church. I know most of you have not subscribed to that channel. Most of you, if not all of you, most likely. So AIC Njoro Town Church. Be proud of your church and share information with those who you, whom you schooled together. This would be um, information that is of use to them, so tafadhali, share widely. Um, thank you sana daktari, tunakuombea safari njema. Yeah, so let's, let's share the information um, with people out there, with our brothers and sisters. Ndiyo kila mtu wasaidike. Safi? Sawa sawa, let's stand and share in the words of the grace, and then we can call this uh, a day. Karibu, asante ni sana wale ambao wame to join na si vijana. Na karibu ni sana siku nyingine tunapenda kutembelewa. Oh yes. I am told kuna bahasha ili, imeenda missing mahali. If you have, if you saw a bahasha and you noticed that it was not put well and you decided to put in your pocket, the owner has just discovered that the bahasha is missing and would want you to return it back. So, tafadhali. Hata siji ilikuwa na nini ndani. Bora bahasha. Kama kuna bahasha, umewana tafadhali tuludishe. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Turus.